this man used to work at Google. Now he's saying <laughs> that Android is a few years behind when it comes to photography. What? Oh, no, no. Just be careful, no, no. Love ain't simple, no, no. Promise me no promises. What is the deal? Beautiful people, it's your boy Ramon, Lifestyles Defined. So this topic is going to go across two channels here. It's obviously it's going to be on our photography channel because this is uh, this is the main focus of this conversation. But it's also going to be on the main tech channel. And if you guys don't know what that is or vice versa, check the links below. You should check out all of our channels. Support the kids. We out here working hard. But nonetheless, this is a, a very interesting topic, a very interesting conversation. This comes from a former Google, uh, would it be an executive? He's pretty high up there in, in the Google world. And this gentleman, this gentleman currently has a love affair with his iPhone 7. And just to put some context on the conversation, he no longer works for Google. And uh, I think it's interesting that he, he has all of a sudden developed this love affair for uh, the iPhone 7 and his camera abilities. And even so, uh, this this guy used to be part of the mobile team for Android. And he is throwing major shade in Android's direction. So he's pretty much proclaiming that uh, Android is a few, <laughs> a few years behind uh, uh, iOS or, or iPhone in terms of photography. Uh, in fact, his closing statement to the whole thing was, uh, bottom line, if you truly care about great photography, you own an iPhone. If you don't mind being a few years behind, buy an Android. Uh, I think that's a huge statement to make. Uh, and I can feel some of you boiling inside. <laughs> uh, there's a lot around this conversation and, and I, I really want to dissect parts of what he was saying and, and the the platform what he was saying was actually facebook and uh there it, there are two pictures of his of his daughters or i presume would be his daughters that he posted uh, in a low light situation in a restaurant and he was just blown away by the quality of these pictures but let's let's take it from from a ground level from step one so the first quote that that really stuck out to me is he said, uh, the end of DSLR for most people has arrived. I left my professional camera at home and took these shots at dinner with my iPhone 7 using computational photography. Portrait mode, as Apple calls it. Hard not to call these uh, results. And he, he's talking about the image uh, in a restaurant taken on a mobile phone with no flash. Stunning great job apple so if we look <laughs> if we look at these images uh there's two of them really and i mean the, the kids are cute as all hell uh sure why not and this is this is something that i i feel gives credence to mobile photography is the ability to capture things like this and i think I think the iPhone did excel here. I think these are these are wonderful, uh, wonderful moments that are captured that any parent would be proud of. In fact, uh, I'm not a parent. I don't have a, a paternal bone or maternal bone in my body. And I can look at this and I can feel, I can connect. Uh, I can feel the joy and the love and the warmth coming off of these images. And that is the point of photography. It's not the gear you used and and, and the megapixels, and th this is the point right here. This is why we get into photography. So yes, uh, I mean, point well taken here. Uh, but there, there's a few things I do want to mention that I, I would like to uh, to sort of add to this this bit, this quote. Uh, first off, this is a different time, and, and I mean, the train of thought from someone who said I. I left my DSLR home in lieu of a cell phone. That tells me that at one uh, at one point or, or another, you cared about image quality and you understood that a DSLR meant that you you want to get the best possible image quality from that moment. If not, you would have had a point and shoot. 
but you didn't. You, you did the research and you went from point and shoot and you went straight to DSLR. That says a lot. And in those days when people who sought after image quality, uh, timeless image quality at that, uh, they wanted the best picture to, to do very specific things. One, they wanted it to last the test of time. And two, uh, I feel like uh, you wanted it to print. Uh, and to you know have these pictures around the house and, and and whatnot so the 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 world we live in now you know the iphone and these shots are good enough because we no longer care about printing them and they're good enough for facebook and they look good enough on facebook they look good enough on uh on instagram and and i think it's unfair to sort of uh to put the iPhone on the stature that he wanted to put it on, on, on the pedestal, he used the DSLR. And the time has come where most people don't care about it. I mean, most people who cared about image quality got DSLRs. And most people who, who didn't care uh, about about uh, the, you know, the intricacies of how a camera works got a point and shoot. I would say the more politically correct technical because this is these are technical claims that he's firing off at Android. So we got to dig deep here. Uh, I would say that the the technical phrase for what he's trying to say is uh, most people don't have standalone cameras. I would have totally accepted that. But to say DSLR, I, I can't really agree. Um, if you owned a DSLR, you cared about image quality and you know that that phone can't come anywhere close to it. That's just my stance on that. Uh, also, looking, going back to these images and, and more so to this point of image quality, all right, because again, he said DSLR, I can see where, where iPhone's portrait mode is feeling. There's a lot about this image and, and he likes this big word. He was an engineer, right? He likes his big word of computational photography. So what computational photography means is, um, the the camera after the image is taken uh the processor of the camera the phone is is really applying a lot of software tricks to make the image very pleasing to, and to actually make it better than it, it was it, it looked when it was actually taken and at the core of this nothing wrong with this in fact i think this is the dopest shit ever uh, iPhone's been executing on this for many years, so many Android phones, but you look at HDR, uh, because HDR is part of, of computational photography on a, on a phone, right? Uh, classic HDR is done in a very different way. Uh, you know, you get your, your multiple exposure images, you layer them on top of each other, and you combine them, and then you, you know, you execute on the phones. These things, it, it, the same concept, but they're done like instantaneously. And, and they do a really good job at it. And, you know, and they do a good job these days has been getting much more tasteful. But this uh, portrait mode where the iPhone sort of creates this uh, accentuated depth of feel, it fails. So if we're looking here, uh, we're looking at the kids, they, they're well in focus, everything looks fine. But then things start to fall apart a lot. Like look right here. You see, this is the along the edges of his hair. Why is this blurred, right? And and this is something that I've come across in my own testing when using a portrait mode on the iPhone. Uh, it, it does wonky things. I mean, it's still got a ways to go, but it does give you uh, at a very low level, someone, you know, I'm sure people who are on his Facebook and not because of what he just said, uh, because people are roasting this man all over the place. Some people are agreeing, why not? Uh, but. People don't really nitpick at that type of stuff. But again, uh, as a photo nerd, my man, you said DSLR as if this thing could replace a DSLR. And coincidentally, here we have this feature that Apple is making to target DSLR-like results, but not quite there. And uh, you know, there's there's a lot about the picture that that just strikes me as I wouldn't be advertising. Almost shouldn't have said DSLR. Just say you think it's a dope ass picture, and I have no problem with anything you say. Uh, but yeah, and then all together, I, I mean, I wouldn't call this image stunning. You know, uh, I don't think proper exposure in an image makes it stunning. Uh, and I'm not trying to undermine what I said earlier about the warmth of this, this image and the love you can feel, because I think 
this image, uh, if I if I were to critique this image, this image is a ten out of a ten. This image, this image reached the potential uh, of of what this person saw when he took it. That's his kids. They're smiling there and focused. The composition's fine. Yada yada yada. But I mean, the image is soft. Not only is the image soft, but there are there are parts of it that are are out of focus because of the computational photography. So again. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, yeah, it's a cool image, but you know, you should have watched your mouth because uh, I could have pulled something out of my ass way better than this on an Android phone. And mind you, a Samsung phone from two years ago. So <laughs> let's not get too, too far into it yet. And uh, the third thing I would want to add there is, uh, like I said, the, you know, Android phones have been doing this for quite some time. Uh, this type of image, this well exposed image when it was a dark environment, uh, it's not something that's unique to Apple. I mean, this was something that Nokia executed first on Windows phone. I mean, iPhones always had amazing cameras, but they always fell apart in low light situations. And then Nokia came out of nowhere with the partnership with, uh, with Microsoft and they were like, you know what? We are going to focus on low light, uh, low light environments and situations because we find from our research that's mainly where people take most of their pictures, you know, in restaurants and bars and yada, yada, yada. And they executed an Android follow suit and iPhone follow suit. And, and now an image like this, I would argue tooth and nail that you could have achieved from any other camera. I don't think iPhone deserves sole praise here although it is a good image. So I got a bit more to read here, and this, this is a pretty long one, but it's, it's a fairly technical. And the reason this is technical is because this guy, again, used to head up uh, the photos part of, of Android. So he, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, he says here, it's because when Samsung innovates the underlying hardware, like a better camera, they have to convince Google to allow that innovation to be surfaced to other applications via the appropriate API. That can take years. Also, the greatest innovation isn't even happening at the hardware level. It's happening at the computational photography level. Google was crushing this five years ago. They had awesome, uh, they auto awesome that was that used AI techniques to automatically remove wrinkles, whiten teeth, add vignetting, etc. But recently, Google has fallen behind. Uh, <laughs> Apple doesn't have all of these constraints. They innovate in the underlying hardware and just simply update the software with their latest innovations like portrait mode and ship it. So uh, there's a lot. This is a very loaded, uh, loaded quote from this man. Uh, there's a lot to agree with here. There's a lot to disagree. The first part of it, I generally agree. Uh, but he's mentioning something, uh, speaking on the innovations in the hardware side, uh, where we know Android cameras have been moving forward. You've got uh, HTC tried and failed for a while, but Samsung, I think, is the shining example of Android cameras moving forward. Uh, and you know, uh, Sony's been doing it for a while, very quietly Sony's been doing it. It's almost uh, like they're underappreciated in the Android world. Uh, but oddly enough, a lot of these cameras have Sony sensors in them, so go figure. Uh, but the, uh, the Android camera game has been stepping up for quite some time. And what he's saying about the API, I mean, this was very old Android, like three, four years ago. In fact, I think a year, a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, forgive me if I, if I don't know the exact timing, but the, I think it was the Android camera two API came out and this did exactly what he's saying. Uh, this gave the, the OEM, the ability to do what they wanted. And we're talking, 
uh, we're talking shooting videos in 4K. We're talking uh, high frame per second recording to slow it down for for slow motion. We're, we're talking high megapixel cameras, HDR HDR images rendered right off the processor of the chip. Like these are all things that that API freed up to do. And yes, it did take years, but it's here now. So I don't really understand how he's using this as a point. I I can't. I can't really say I agree with that. Uh, then there's also the the second part where he's saying a lot of the innovation is happening in the computational photography level, pretty much the software. Uh, rightfully so, I, I think. I wouldn't say we hit a wall, but you know the the image processors and the sensors on these these phones, these smartphones, have matured quite a bit, like most of, uh, other parts of a smartphone, and. We're, we're seeing where they're no longer in the megapixel race. You know, they're dialing back once a phone would come out with 16 megapixels and uh, next year's version of it would have 20 megapixels and then the next one would have 24. Here, they're just going, guys, let's just focus on what matters. So you're seeing these 12 megapixel shooters, sometimes eight megapixel shooters, and 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 that's meant to, to really... Uh, have a better sensitivity to light. So again, they go to achieve that mission of low light photography. And and we're seeing we're seeing a lot more capable processors. Uh, I, 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 I think by nature, you can only do so much in a hardware world. And the only the, the next the next logical way is to attack software, right? And this is something that I've I've long been a Microsoft fanboy and, and I've, I've preached this to a lot of people. It's not about hardware, it's about software, software optimization. Uh, my, this is what Microsoft does, they're a software company. Uh, this is what Apple does, they optimize the bejesus out of hardware that is underpowered or not as power powerful as everything else on the market. But yet still they get better results in so many various fields. It's all about software, it's a software world. And uh, I think he's right in saying that it's happening at a computational photography level. But I think he's god awful wrong that Google has fallen behind. Uh, in fact, there there's an article uh, from way I guess yeah about April was this April yeah April 25th is uh, one of the engineers. Uh, what team was he on? I forgot what team he was on. Uh, he he went out on a side project and and just developed this app that was aimed at high quality night photography. And how he achieved it was his, his app uh, allowed you to manually set the, the exposure time, the ISO and the focus distance. And what was special about this app is when you hit that button, it would start compiling raw files of an image. So the concept is very familiar or very similar to to how hdr is done in actuality but it was it, it was taking different points of the image and then you would stitch them together in post he used a nexus 6p and a, a pixel xl and the the images that he got were astounding coming from a cell phone and these are things that google's now working on and you know the other day i can't find the article but I read uh, I read that Google's working on uh, on this new AI that studies. Uh, I think it profiles like the top 50 landscape photographers in the world, and it pays attention to how they color grade the image, how they you know where they lower the exposure and drop the highlights and whatnot, and they sort of. They, they sort of translate that into an algorithm and that algorithm then applies that that train of thought, that trained mentality to your images. And I thought that was super dope, you know, and I'm not saying Apple's not doing anything like that, but I'm saying, dude, Google's working and coming from someone who was at Google fairly recently, like I I don't understand where he, here he's coming from with these things saying, uh, Google's fallen behind and again a second instance I don't think Apple deserves sole praise here like uh, you know I don't think Apple's been leading the smartphone industry for a while in photography so this is this is all interesting to me uh 
His last quote, uh, I'll read it again, the bottom line. If you truly care about great photography, you own an iPhone. If you don't mind being a few years behind, buy an Android. I mean, I, I listen, this guy's obviously smart, probably smarter than me, but I, I think he completely missed the mark on this. Uh, I don't know what his love affair with the iPhone 7 is as of now, and he's totally entitled to it. I had some dope shots. Uh, I put my iPhone to work every now and then. It, it's fully capable, but the point remains, um, the iPhone is not the best camera on the market, and it hasn't been it hasn't been for quite some time. And even addressing his point that Apple is pushing the computational photography level to another game, and Google isn't, is completely false. I mean, Samsung's doing the same thing. HTC's doing the same thing. Sony's doing the same thing. They were doing it with HDR video. I mean, come on. This is th these things are out there, and and I, I don't think it's I don't think it's fair for him to sort of. Uh, to point to, or to put iPhone on this this pedestal, I, I, I think I think there's a lot missing here. Like if we could talk to him, uh, I would like to hear F challenged on these points what he would have to uh, to say. Uh, in in terms of computational photography, what I will say is when I look back at my Nokia, my Lumia 1020, a 43 megapixel camera. Uh, and even my 1520, that that lossless zoom, that super sampling technology is something that uh, we haven't quite seen in any other cameras, any other phones. And I'm curious to see what Nokia does in their return, if they'll return to that that concept, that type of photography. But what I what I like the most about uh, about Nokia's approach back in the day is it wasn't about software. It was just killer lens and a killer process and the images were dope as shit coming out of the camera uh i i don't i think the very basis uh going back to this comparison between a dslr and a cell phone i think the very basis of computational photography is it exists to make up for the fact that it does not have the same image quality as a dslr obviously but you're you're asking your software to commit to a long haul to make up for uh, downfalls that it that were or exist on the hardware side, and I think it's important to understand and respect that. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, Apple's doing dope shit. Uh, Samsung's doing dope shit. They also have their version of that portrait mode, which I tested, and to me, uh, it's a little bit better than the iPhone portrait mode. Although I will say the iPhone portrait mode seem to be more so for actual people. Uh, where Samsung gets subjects a lot better. You see a lot less of that random blurring. But let me know what you guys think. This is a hot topic. I know a lot of people are like, what? Especially coming from someone that was inside the Google camp. You would think he knows some inside information. But uh, I mean, there's a lot out there that Google's doing that he just discredited, you know. Is he just an Apple fanboy all of a sudden? Could be. Uh, is he just an Apple lover? I mean, he could be. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. My name is Ramon. I hope you liked the video. Hit the like if you like it. If the first time you're coming across us, uh, slap that subscribe button. We got plenty more coming. And also, check out the, uh, the, the links in the description. We got so many more channels. Sneaker channel, gaming channel, photography channel, uh, accessories channel. But we, we're getting to work out here. Uh, I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs> well, I guess. And the reason we started Lifestyles to Find is because uh, if we weren't on camera arguing about these things, the technologies, the phones, the iPhones, the Androids, the cameras, the games, we'd be on the phone arguing about it. <laughs> we'd be in each other's houses arguing about it. So why not just put it in front of a camera for everyone to enjoy it the way we do? That's what Lifestyles to Find is all about. We just love it.